We are here with Amy Spithorst, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for 2008 for the Elk Grove Unified School District. Amy, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tim. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us where you teach and, and what you teach. Okay, I teach at Florin High School in Sacramento, and it's a fairly large urban school. And we're in the Elk Grove School District, and I teach agriculture classes, um, fabrication with wood and metal, and also agriculture economics. Well, tell us a little bit about the, the subject matter sure. because you don't associate those types of courses mm -hmm. with an, an urban school setting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, our program's at 800 students this year, so we just hit 800. And I know it's a, a rather unusual thing to have at an urban school is a large agriculture program. We're right now at over half the school's population is in agriculture, and I believe it's just because it's a good program that brings students that want to take part in a small learning community on our campus and be part of a family. Tell us about some of the subjects and what you teach and, and what those classes are all about. Sure. I teach a, the fabrication with wood and metal has quite a few pieces within it. So I teach welding, wood shop, um, cold metal work, uh, plumbing, electricity, and engine. So all those units go within that class and it um, probably seems strange to have a woman teacher that does that but I was interested in it way back in high school and was in shop classes all my life and then I went to college and majored in agriculture and took agriculture mechanics classes and so that got me excited about teaching so I got the opportunity about 10 years ago at Florin to teach those classes and really have built a program so large that there's more sections of that than, me, that I, can, than I can teach so students are standing in line because they want to build and they want to create and, they want to learn their academics hands-on, learn their math and their English, um, sitting and creating some, sometimes in a more passive environment. So it's, it's exciting. There seems to be a, a real interest lately in career and technical education, hands-on yet at the same time using the, the applied mathematics and those types of things. That must be encouraging for you to see that great interest. It really is. Governor Schwarzenegger came to our program last year and he had a little press conference in there so he had some of our students speak to him about career technical education, what it means to them, what it's going to do for them and it's really neat to hear the student voices and some are going to to college and will support themselves using career technical education and some will go straight into the world of work and many of my students go to um, junior colleges and um, take their skills a little further but it is an exciting time for career technical education and a lot of funding coming our way and I really think it will be the future of education and how we educate our students in math and English. It um, could be the hook that reduces the high school dropout rate I believe. And also what you're doing is you're, you're preparing uh, the students for two paths at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the student that's going to come to the banquet with, with me, I chose him. He was in our agriculture program from a freshman and he's a really neat guy and he got a full ride scholarship to Berkeley and he's going to be a lawyer, which he um, took part with his career technical education, his learning and was able to um, take that and go all the way to Berkeley and I'm very proud of him. I bet you are. So, so what inspired you to be a teacher? What made you think that you wanted to do this? In my town in Bodega Bay, it's a pretty small town, and my high school had 20 seniors in it that we had graduated, and my dad's a teacher at, at that school, and uh, I always thought, well, a teacher would be a possible career. You know, in a small town, you don't think a lot about college or maybe future, at least I didn't then, and I had a high school teacher that was an agriculture teacher, and it, she was a woman and I thought well gosh I could do that and so she um, helped me apply for colleges and I got into um, CSU Fresno so I was able to take my pig with me to uh, <laughs> down to college and and kind of pursue my agriculture um, interest being I grew up on a ranch a, a sheep ranch but I had pigs in high school and it was just an exciting way for me to learn. I, I'm always one of those learners, and I know my students realize it in class that I move on to something very quickly. I'm a real active learner like they are. And in high school, you know, I wasn't good at sitting down and learning the old-fashioned way either. And so I think shop classes really do bring out a real active environment for them. So I wanted to be that kind of teacher that could help students that were like me in high school that wanted to be doing something else, something different, and also to uh, go to college or to go straight to work or do something that will be successful for them and for their future. What do you find most enjoyable 
uh, about teaching? You know, since the year, the school year has just started, and I was wondering that myself, because you're like, oh, gosh, it's a big task to get your classes up and going and ready to go for the year. And then the minute you're in there, it's like you're at home. It's hard to, to, to um, describe unless you're a teacher, but I feel you, the connections you build with students, and it's the student coming back after four years and saying, Mrs. Spudorst, you made a difference. I was going down a wrong path and your why I went to this college or your why I went and pursued a welding um, certificate. Those things, I don't think there's any other career that does that for people and I feel lucky to have those, um, those feelings all the time and you see kids in Lowe's and you see them at McDonald's or wherever you're at and kids will come up to you and, and um, I guess it's, a, it's an amazing career to be able to have that kind of impact on people. What do you find most challenging about teaching? At uh, Florin High School, our population is ever-changing and, and becoming very socioeconomically probably disadvantaged in that area. And sometimes it's sad when you can't make a difference in a student's life and the student just can't quite make it and there's not much you can do as a teacher to bring them to the table. And uh, sometimes it's the students that don't make it that are my biggest um, the thing that bothers me the most inside, and so I'm always looking for ways or looking to um, bring kids to the table and make them, you know, be successful because uh, high school seems so short. Out of my senior class this year, I just started and I had taught a lot of them as freshmen and I think to myself, they seem like babies and now they're seniors and I was telling them in class that, you know, here in, you know, less than nine months, you're going to have to go out and get a job and get prepared for their future. And I really don't think that all of them have even fathomed that yet. And I just would like to get them prepared because it scares me when students aren't prepared for their life. Well, obviously, when you're getting them ready for a career, um, you're kind of pushing them in a direction to get them to realize mm -hmm. that they do have to take care of themselves someday. Mm -hmm. And that's a, as a career technical teacher, sometimes maybe see, the start of their senior year, I felt like I failed. If a student says, I, you know, we're talking about career goals or on their resume, we've been doing some resume work, and I see that maybe students don't have a real clear idea quite yet, so I just wanted to start to firm it up with them because it, senior year will go back by faster than they even know, and you know, you just worry for them and try to prepare them as much as you can. Do you have a lot of students who initially, when you've met them, they didn't even think that college was possible for them? Mm hmm A lot of students. About, oh, maybe six years ago I had a student and he was um, our FFA president, but he really didn't think that um, school was for him, even high school was for him. He was in one of my um, agriculture mechanics classes and as time went on, he'd always kind of re-sign up for one of my classes and be in it. And by the end, he graduated, and then he went off to Fresno to become an ag teacher. And I just, he's one of my success stories. I feel like I made a difference. He would just say, he'd just say to me, like, how did you get to be a teacher? You know, what makes, what, how did you do it? He'd ask questions like that, because I don't think he knew how. And he'd think to himself, like, oh, I could teach shop during the day. You know, because people come sometimes think that teaching is reading and it's just writing but there's all so many different things so that's what seemed to light him up and especially in a um, in a time when career technical teachers are really at a shortage there's not very many of them and it's neat to get people in the field and I think it's so important to have women do it and all different people to bring other people to the table because my uh, classes are over 50 percent girls right now and um I mean, the girls, it's, I always tease the boys, but they're better at the mechanics task and welding sometimes than the boys are because they have such fine motor control, and we have a lot of fun with that. But I think it's having the role models of people that other people may or may not think can do that job, and they really um, enjoy seeing it. Well, we appreciate your time and telling us about your program and your students. We've been speaking with Amy Spithorst, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Oak Grove Unified School District for 2008. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Tim.